So guys, this was a standalone task and is just getting back into drawing, overlaying things, trying things out, doing some working out, focusing on shape and proportion. Now, I've gone on a little bit further because we're going to develop some work based on our artist. Let me see if I can just zoom out here. You can see other things on my desk now. And what we have here is we have a range of the same things that I've drawn on the previous sheet. I've selected, I don't have them all. So I've got my reference material and you can see how I've transferred some things over. I've got some new features that I've not drawn previously, but I've drawn in pencil. This is the underdrawing. Now on my screen in front of me, I have some work. I'm just going to unclip you and show you some research about Edward Borden. I'm looking at his use of text. So see on some of these imagery, we can see some text. And we know he did some project design and Fortnum and Mason work and we can see book covers and things here. So there is some text there that might inspire us. And on here we see the work of Eric Revillius, who is another British artist, and I've specifically looked for his alphabet. Now, the reason why I've done that is in the image I'm working on, there are some spaces. And because I haven't pictorially just represented a single view of the building, I have this as sort of a symbol of different elements to suggest MGS. What I'd like to do is maybe incorporate some text. Now you might say, but what text, miss? I'm not doing anything too fancy here, guys. I'm just going to, first of all, get a ruler. And I'm thinking about just the letters MGS. Now, I don't just want a handwritten font, but I do want something that looks quite like the artist style. So I might sketch out the peaks of an M. Obviously, I've got these two lines, a top and bottom line to help me. I'm drawing a kind of oval shape that I'm going to construct into my G. Can you see I'm just drawing the shape of it? Might have a bit high, I don't know. And the S. Now, I want the S proportions to probably be similar to the G. I do think maybe my G looks a little bit squashed compared with my M, so I might do some modification. Just reaching in to get a rubber. I've got a really messy rubber here. So you see how I'm using the construction lines to do some working out. That's going to overlap the window. That's been quite a long time drawing. And I might use a similar shape, similar proportion to do my S. Now the question is, am I happy on its position? Slightly wider that one, but I think I can probably get away with it. And bring that S down and across. Now you could print some text out. You could go onto Word and look at different fonts. You could print some out and you might think about collaging it in, or you might think about ways in which you could incorporate it. Do you see how I'm sort of thickening out this letter? Now on the work of the artist I looked at, Revillius and Borden, there was a kind of handmade quality to it. So it might be that you print something out and you trace it off. See, I'm trying to develop my own little font here. Kind of quite regular. That's my teams pinging in the background. So it has that hand-drawn feeling to it. Now we'll continue to work on this. I might add other things into it as well. I might want to incorporate some text panels and do some calligraphy, some handwritten work. At the moment, I want to keep more onto the drawing side of it. So beside me, what you'll see is I've brought out my Ed Clues reference material again. Now I've popped in a bit more of the school badge that's on the front of the building. It's not in position with the mitre that was already there because I was looking to fill some of this negative space. And I was thinking, what else can I use to fill this space that's not just kind of brick pattern? I could use the brick pattern. But I thought back and I looked back to my artists and this is where artists are invaluable to us. And I was looking at Ed Clues's trees and I thought they are great. I looked back at my reference material and when I took these photographs, I wasn't really thinking about the trees. I was thinking about the building. But again, this is why wider research is really useful to us. So I've taken the shape of this tree here. It's a very familiar tree to me because it's right outside the art department. Obviously, the art department runs across here and down and into this area. So I've started to take the shape, general shape of that tree and I popped it in there. That's filling that space. I did think, what else can I pop into here to kind of break this up? I thought I could still incorporate some other branches into the trees coming across. Now, I would look at reference material rather than make things up. 
I might incorporate some bricks down into here. I might go much larger than the bricks would be in this section. If I look back to the reference material, they'd be very, very small. But when I was doing my earlier sampling, let me find the other drawing. There we have teams pinging away in the background again. Do you remember, I did some larger sampling and I quite like that rather than the smaller bit. So I'm going to incorporate some of that. So if somebody was looking at this and didn't really know MGS, like we all know it quite well, they might think, oh, it's a brick building. That kind of times it and puts an era about this building. So I'm just drawing things lightly into the design and then the fun will begin. Now with this particular piece, I'm thinking of working in black and white. I'm sticking with just a drawing. Now you might decide not to do this type of work and move on to the next option. So bear with us and just go through this and enjoy watching and seeing if this could be connected to what you decide to do. So guys, what I have here, I've just popped a piece of tracing paper over the top of my work because I'm going to do a sample and a test. Now you might say, I don't have any paper mist at home of that type, but if you do have baking parchment or greaseproof paper, you might use some of that in the kitchen. You might go and speak to your parents and just check you can borrow a piece of that. Now, this type I'm draw drawing I'm going to do now is called a continuous line, and you'll see why very rapidly. So my pen is about to touch the paper, and I'm drawing, oh, I've taken my pen off then, with a continuous line. It kind of flows because you don't take the line, the pen off the paper ideally. If you do, you don't have to restart. You see what I'm doing? Oh, I've gone a bit wobbly at that side. Now it becomes tricky when you have little elements like these floating around in the middle. You probably can't see it very clearly. So I've had to do a connector line on there because I'm being true to a continuous line. So if I continue. Now because I'm on the tracing paper, this sample, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong. If I like it, I can obviously redraw this style. I need to be looking at the reference material, not just the thing I'm tracing over. So if I go back to it, it's quite dirty on here, so I might add some tone. Now you might think about mark making and textures. You can obviously take your pen off to jump from one big area to another. I probably should have done that rather than done the continuous line and being true to it in this section. But it's given a kind of very clear style. If it's darker, I can put marks in. I'm going for a kind of circular mark, a kind of scribbly mark, but working in a very controlled way within the lines. Can you see that, guys? Now, I could break away for a little bit from my continuous line and add some additional textures. With this, you could think about volume and directional line. Remember the old, my old favorite demonstrator? When we draw something, we want to suggest volume. Put this more in the middle of the image for you. There we see it. We've got a little bit of volume on there versus something with flat lines making it look flat. So if you can, you can explore a little bit of volume. Now, don't say, but I don't know how to do it. You're going to learn it by trying it. Does it work? Reflect, try it, share on Teams. Let's have a look at it. Now, I might decide I want some solid fill. And I think I might have some solid fill around my lettering. So I'm going to just draw around the lettering. I've picked up a chunkier pen now. Now remember, at this moment in time, I'm on the tracing paper, so nothing is lost. It doesn't matter if I go wrong, because I'm sampling. And recall, we keep our samples, because this is a massively important part of the process. See, my solid fill's got little white sections into it. I'm not doing a very good and very neat section of solid fill. But... I'm giving it a quick try and sampling. You could say, Murph, why don't you go and get a larger pen? Well, I could do. But obviously, that would come with risks that I might not get into the detail. So you have to pick the right tool for the job. So I'm just filling that in. Do I like the texture? I can decide that afterwards. Oh, I went off my line a little bit there. So I'm going to just tidy up around there. So I'm sort of working out sections as I go. But remember, this is purely a sample. Now you could just commit onto your image. If we were in school, what we might do is we might do a photocopy and then work on a photocopy sample. Um, I'm going to look at these trees, these branches. I'm going back to look at Ed's clues and how he handles his trees. Look at that one, like a silhouette one, and that one like a negative space one. Which shall I do? 
I might try the negative space. I've got this branch that comes up. I don't want any leaves on it. I quite like his kind of haunty winter tree. And this is reflecting school as it is today. With these trees with no leaves on. In a school with few pupils in. Kind of reflects the time, doesn't it? So I can feel like I'm telling a bit of a story and connecting to the absence of things at school by the absence of leaves on a tree. You might think, Miss, you've gone off now, you've gone off on a strange ideas connection thing, but that's what it's about. Your strange ideas and connections might add into it and bring something to it. I've gone off my lines a little bit here. I'm going back to do my solid fill. Bear with me, just zooming away there. Could have used a larger pen at this stage. Now, if you feel that this is going really well, you could continue the whole thing on the tracing paper. And later we could spray glue this down when we're back at school with some special spray adhesive that wouldn't wrinkle. Pritt stick or PVA would cause this to wrinkle and it wouldn't look completely slick. So we have to use the right type of adhesive. I'm going to let that branch just come across here, I think, rather than as I was doing. And with the bricks, I want to do that thing where I'm drawing the individual bricks in. And you might think, Merv, how on earth are you going to blend these sections together? Well, to be honest, guys, I'm not entirely sure yet. So I'm drawing my bricks. I might try some textures in my bricks. Maybe with my smaller pen. Sound effect is often something you hear when I'm drawing. Start the brick on the row below. And how am I going to blend these things in? What could I do? What's in your mind as you're watching this? What would you do? Would you sit there with your hand up? Would you shout out? Or would you try something? Remember, we are interested in you developing your artistic confidence and see what you would do. Now, I'm running close to the edge of this page as well, so it's hard for you to see everything I'm doing here. Keeping this brick and this brick in line with each other. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do bricks everywhere because I've got a solid fill section here. So how am I going to join these sections and make it work? Well, who knows? Let's try a bit of solid fill there. Maybe have the white of that mortar coming up here, that cement section. So it looks like it's a sort of fade out. The branch of that tree is going all the way to the edge. You see what I'm doing, guys? I'm kind of working it out as I go along, trying things out. But look at the dramatic connections between the work of the artist that I've been looking at. Let's go back and look and see how how Borden has handled surfaces and textures. I'm now thinking some of these textural marks look a little bit like these marks here. So it might be that you've been looking at what I've been doing with a continuous line and thinking that is not for you. You might give it a try and you might think this is not working. So you might decide you want to try something else. Sticking with the same material, I've just moved my tracing paper and I'm going in for a much more precision image. Now I do know some of you and your characters as artists and I think you probably wouldn't want to do the, fit, the sort of looser work and you'd like a much cleaner drawing. That is absolutely cool. Try it out, develop it. So you see how I'm drawing on here? with a much more accurate line. Remember, because I'm working on the tracing or the underdrawing, it doesn't matter which, because you could be working directly onto the sheet. I've actually got a kind of wobbly line in there, but I'm going to go back over it with a bit more confidence. Now into this section, I could still go in and do the solid fill in a much neater way than the way I was doing previously. You might say, but Miss, you've just said that the other way was a bit like the artist. Yes, but we are developing our own style at the same time. We're making reference to them as I looked at Ed Clues's trees and it gave me some ideas. And then we are working and developing our own style. So here at the front of the school, I'm going to draw the line with a bit more precision. I could continue that section. I've only stopped it from the point of view. And I want to show you different sections and what I'm going to do with them. Now it might be that you don't have a fine liner and you want to try this with a biro. There's a lot of solid fill in here if you were going at this with a biro. But you might decide 
that you have other materials and you want to give it a try you could in theory do it all in pencil the pen gives it a kind of graphic quality and changes it a little bit you see i'm just drawing the steps now into the front door i'm going to draw the arch of the door so i'm doing a lot more precision work here obviously it's harder to correct when you're working with pen but there my line was a little bit wobbly so i'm just going to go over it and thicken it out a little bit it doesn't have to be even remember because at each side of the door it might be slightly different from shadows etc so i'm just now putting in the door frame putting in some detail into the door i can try a little section into it and decide if i like that for the moment i might leave it now there is a panel above the door here the detail is so small, look at the size of my nib versus the detail, I'm not going to be able to get it all in but I just kind of put some like radial little lines in to suggest something similar to what's going on over there. Now I might put the marks in around the door and I've got to draw here, draw in parallel so I'm having to really concentrate. I went quiet then for a sec because I was concentrating. Phew. Do you know, guys, I get an adrenaline rush and a sense of relief when I've done something like that. Whew. Then there's the panels from the 2020. I'm not going to fit that minute writing in with this pen, am I? So I'm going to leave that. Now, my drawing's going a little bit out. It's not completely true. The proportions are going off a little bit as I can't do the detail quite as small with this pen. So I'm just moving things and modifying them. No one is going to be looking at your drawing and this and say it's not fully accurate to the proportions of the building. If it's a bit wonky in its arch, that's a different matter entirely, but this is about capturing the essence. So I'm now drawing in these little windows. I've gone off my line, so I'm just thickening over it. So you see now I'm doing a very fine drawing. Now, because it's on the tracing paper, it's a little bit fuzzy. I'll just pop it onto some white for you. You can sort of see these two different style drawings coming along. Into this one, if you want to add in, in textures, you might go for a much more controlled texture. I do want to warn you though, if you are working on tracing paper, it is smudgy. I'm going to draw the same line on the normal paper. It will smudge a bit. Do you know why the tracing paper smudged more? think about it anyone got an answer for me it's because it is not as porous so it's not absorbing absorbing the water out of the pen as quickly sitting on the surface for longer so you have to be very careful or reorientate your work to avoid putting your hand over it and smudging it if you do smudge it don't worry too much remember we've got our white pens at school and later we can go on and do some tidying up or we can scan it and we can clean it up as an edit Hi guys, so here I am at my desk and I'm sat working away developing the drawing. So this is the new sample. I'm still working on the tracing. I tried a new couple of techniques in here and I quite liked it more than the continuous line. So I'm just doing it now and very carefully just hand filling and working back into it. Taking my time, looking at my reference material all the time, looking to the artist when I'm not sure about how to handle something, seeing how they've done it, give me some ideas. So I'll catch up with you when I finish this. Guys, I'm just checking back in because what I have here is a circle template. And to do the clock, I am going to just use this to help me. Now, I don't want it to just be like the perfect line. So I'm going to press and alter the weight of it a little bit. But I have a, a circle where I want it. These circle templates are really handy. We have plenty of them in school. If you do continue and decide to do GCSE art, you see how I'm selecting which one I want and position it by eye because I don't want this to be too tight. I want it to have that hand-drawn quality and it would look a bit odd if I make it too perfect. So I've got two circles on there for the clock. I could put some other elements into it as well. I might just show you. So where there's that outer rim on the clock, I might just try see if I can... It's not quite in line, but that doesn't matter. That kind of works. Now, when positioning the hands on the clock, you might just see that I've drawn a crosshair here and then divided it into the relative thirds. So that's just something to help you. Now, there is no way I'm going to draw all that detail into there, but I do need the hands on this clock. 
The question is, am I going to till the true time, the time when I was there? And we're going to change it. I'm going to roughly make it as it was, the one hand on the clock. And the little hand is somewhere between two and three. It's like an inverted love heart. There we go. Who knew that? Who studied the clock that closely? Now, I can't quite see what these shapes are, but they're sort of circular. So I'm going to put a circular on the 15 minute marker. And then I'm going to go for a single marker in the gaps. See you again shortly. Right guys, I'm back because I've stumbled across this technique. I had drawn some bricks in here and I wanted to fade it out. So I started this sort of dash-like texture in a line using the chunky pen. And whilst it's got a little curve on the side where I'm lifting it up, I'm finding this to be quite successful. And this is what I mean about artist style, because if we look at these things that we've looked at before, this is a little bit different, but obviously influenced by the artist we've looked at, these blending from dark to light areas, these textures and marks and patterns. So if you can see this sort of rhythm, it's in a line and it's suggestive of brickworks. It's a little bit like the section I've done up here because I'm leaving the cement area white and creating the illusion of bricks. I'm not doing it in a particularly regular way in as much as each brick is a similar size like there would be in the wall. But I'm doing it in a fairly organised way. I'm having to work in very clear lines. I've not got really enough room now at this bottom bit. You're with me at the right time. How am I going to handle that? I'm just going to draw the line along the bottom bit there. There we go. See you again in a bit. So guys, here we have the final drawing. Now there's some new features in here, like there's a bit of a bird up there. There's a bit down here that doesn't make a lot of sense because you can see part of the quad and you can't see the perspective on other bits. And I might add to it again later. You can see the clear influence of the artist's style that I've been looking at, but not a direct copy of their work. It's obviously influenced by the subject matter of MGS. But this little parakeet flying around, as we know, those of us on site, you see lots of them. And you can see how I've added some brickwork into the text. The text didn't seem to work particularly well. So I've done that to try and bring everything together. Let's go on and have a look at another technique. 